Tonight on News R. Death toll from Niger boat mishap hits 36. PDP members stage protest say no to council election in River State. Truck drivers in Guagualada decry challenges clamor for more than trailer park. And on the international scene, 45 dead, 61 missing as two migrant boats capsize in Djibouti. Good evening. Welcome to Trust TV News R. I am Sumaya Abubakar. And now the details. Local drivers and also officials of the Niger State Manage Emergency Management Agency and the National Emergency Management Agency, the NEMA, on Thursday recovered about 20 more bodies from after a passenger boat conveying the Maulid celebrant capsized in Bajibo, Mokwa, local government area of Niger State. The recovery on brought the total number of deaths to 36, according to the Niger State Emergency Management Agency. A boat carrying 300 Maulid celebrants capsized around 8 p.m. on Tuesday after taking off from Mundi community just a short distance to the victim's destination. The Director General, Niger State Emergency Management Agency, Abdullahi Babaara, said 16 bodies of the victims, comprising two female and 14 men, had earlier been recovered on Wednesday and buried at Wajibo community. Ara said search and rescue operation was still ongoing to recover the remaining victims. Still a matter of that state, uh, members of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, and some stakeholders in River State have staged a peaceful protest against the October 5th local government elections bill to take place in the state. The protesters gathered at the People's Democratic Party, the PDP Secretariat, along Abba Road in Potakot, before proceeding to headquarters of DSS and the police. Some of the stakeholders included former local government chairman, loyal to the FCT minister, members of the Federal House of Representatives, a former chief of staff, and other critical stakeholders. Speaking at the state's headquarters of the DSS and the police, the state chairman of the PDP, Aaron Chukwemeka, said the protest is to say no to the October 5th local government elections, adding that his party will not participate due to a court judgment restraining the RCEC from conducting the elections. We as law-abiding citizens and people that believe in rule of law, there was a court judgment on the 30th of September restraining the <coughs> RCEC not to conduct the election Reason being that they never complied to the, 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 the laws of that election. And then restraining the security agencies, restraining their neck, not to give them voters register. And we as a party, we have also agreed to comply to those uh, orders that were the judgment that was given not to participate in that election. But our own problem, why we came this one, is that no man is bigger than the law. This order must be obeyed by the state government and the research. Ahead of the local government polls in Jigawa State, the state police command has imposed restrictions on all forms of vehicular movement from 12 a.m. on Friday, October 1st, 2024, to 6 p.m. on Saturday, October 5th, 2024, except for those on essential duties. This is contained in a statement by the command's public relations officer, DSP Lawan Shisu Adam, on Thursday. According to the statement, only vehicles on essential duties or services, such as JGCF officials, election observers, ambulances for medical emergencies, and firefighters, among others, are exempted from the restriction imposed on vehicular movement. He reminded political parties and their supporters in the state that the ban on political thuggery and use of weapons during elections is still in force, adding that anyone caught will be arrested and prosecuted. Similarly, the command also warned all security aides and escorts from accompanying their principals and politicians to polling units and coalition centers during the election period. 
Adam said the command, in collaboration with all sister security agencies and other relevant stakeholders, will work harmoniously to fish out troublemakers and their sponsors, adding that anyone caught will be arrested and arranged to face the full wrath of the law. Ahead of the submission of the report on the 10-member inter-ministerial committee on the implementation of the Supreme Court's ruling on local government's area's autonomy next week, state governors had began fresh lobbying against the enforcement of the verdict. The panel headed by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, has concluded its assignment and is expected to submit its report on or before October 13th. Under former President Muhammad Buhari, the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit issued a regulation effective from June 1, 2019, banning transactions on state and local government joint accounts. Funds were sent directly to the accounts of the local government. It is also limited. Um, it also limited about cash withdrawals from local government accounts to a maximum amount of 500,000 naira per day with penalties for banks that failed to comply. However, state governors under the ages of the Nigerian Governors Forum kicked against this regulation and the NFIU eventually cat capitulated. A former acting governor of the central bank, the CBN, for Lashodun Shonubi, has said the, he learned that there were intrigues and politics in the Nara redesign policy and exercise carried out in 2022. Shonubi, the deputy governor operations before his appointment as the acting CBN governor, said the former governor of the CBN, Godwin Emefile, told him and others that there were intrigues and politics in the whole exercise. Shonubi, now retired and the prosecution's third witness, made this claim in reaction to a question from a Mephilis lawyer, Olale Khan Ojo, at the resumed hearing in the trial of the ex-governor of CBN. Emefile is being prosecuted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, before the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory on four counts bordering on disobedience to the direction of law and illegal acts causing injury to the public about the Nara redesign exercise. Ojo had asked Shunubi if, as a seasoned CBN banker, he was aware of the intrigues and politics in the Nara redesign exercise. The witness said he ordinarily did not know but learned from a Mayfile during one of their meetings that there were indeed intrigues and politics in the exercise. The witness, however, did not say if a Mayfile told them what the intrigues and the politics were. On security matters, the anti-kidnapping unit of the FCT Police Command on Tuesday arrested four notorious kidnappers who have been terrorizing the federal capital territory, um, namely, of course. And the statement by the FCT Police Command the Public Relations Officer, SP Josephine Day said, Ya Usani, a.k.a. Baba, an ex-convict, Nuhu, a.k.a. Giwa, Kabiru Mohammed and Yusuf Hassan were arrested at their criminal hideout in Sauka, Abuja, following credible intelligence. The suspects confessed to being responsible for a series of kidnappings of unsuspecting residents in the FCT and its environs and the killing of seven victims in the process. This gang have attacked Dokwa, Dawaiki, the Ako Estate, Dupe Village, Zuma Rock, Kuchuko Village, and some villages in Niger and Kaduna. They also led police operatives to another hideout in Gauraka Forest, Suleja, Niger State, where they dug out four AK-47 rifles, 13 AK-47 rifles, 162 rounds of 7.6 mm live ammunition. Gunmen early Thursday killed two policemen in Oruagu, Newi, local government area of Anambra State. The officers were conducting investigations in the area when the attack occurred. 
confirming the killings, the police public relations officer of the command, SP Tochuku Ikenga, stated that the Joint Security Force has begun a manhunt for the armed men who murdered two police operatives during their investigation. According to him, preliminary information revealed that the armed men opened fire on the police operatives upon sighting them and threw an improvised explosive into their operational vehicle. Tragically, two of the operatives lost their lives and the vehicle caught fire. The PPRO urged members of the public, especially eyewitnesses, to assist with the ongoing police operations in the area. Now, key security stakeholders across the Sahel gathered in Abuja to address the ongoing insecurity plaguing the region and explore viable solutions. Organized by the news agency of Nigeria, the forum brought together policymakers, security experts and diplomats to identify the triggers and propose strategies for stabilizing the Sahel. Trust TV's Shafil Suleiman reports. The first international lecture on insecurity in the Sahel, titled Insecurity in the Sahel 2008-2024, Dissecting Nigeria's Challenges, Genesis, impacts and options brought together leading experts to tackle the crisis. Key factors identified include socio-economic hardships, environmental pressures, poor governance, and regional stability, all of which continue to fuel the insecurity threatening both Nigeria and the wider Sahel region. At the heart of the insecurity in this region, among other factors, are the undercurrents of poverty, Unemployment, proliferation of small arms and light weapons, weak governance and institutional failures, as well as climate change and environmental degradation. The collapse of the Libyan state in 2011, for instance, unleashed an influx of weapons and fighters which catalyzed the rise of militant groups across the Sahel. Nigeria, as a critical player in the region, has borne a significant share of the fallout from this instability. A secure Nigeria is a secure Sahel region because of our number, because of our size, because of our strategic position where we are. We are fixing Nigeria, and you will see it is going to translate into the other parts of our neighbors who are indeed facing challenges and difficulties. With a population nearing 2 billion in rich in salt after mineral resources, the Sahel is becoming a magnet for non-state actors, experts warn. This growing interest underscores the urgent need for authorities to develop sustainable solutions to address the region's mounting challenges. Society has a lot of role to play in fighting insecurity. It's not about the kinetic measures. It's not about the Nigerian Armed Forces, but we as the citizens and the society, we need to play a very critical role in addressing this issue by providing adequate information to the security agencies. Because Nigerians, all of us, especially all of us in this hall, I believe, have seen large populations from either Niger or Chad moving into Nigeria, either one out of drought, insecurity, economic failure, or combination of both. Despite efforts by the Nigerian government and its regional partners to tackle insecurity, rising poverty, unemployment, school dropouts, and deadly attacks by non-state actors reveal that much remains to be done. The situation continues to worsen, casting doubt on the effectiveness of current strategies. Shapiro Suleiman. Trust TV News, Abuja. The Senator representing Niger East um, Senatorial District and Chairman Senate Committee on Finance, Mohammed Sani, has kicked against the establishment of state police, saying it would be abused by the political class. Senator Sani said what is required is adequate funding for the existing police structure. And in that resources available for sub-nationals are inadequate to fund the state police. 
The senator made the statement when he visited the Kuta internally displaced persons camp to commiserate with the people over Ban's attacks. He appealed to the service chiefs to extend the ongoing onslaught against bandits in Niger as it is doing in Zamfara State. This Kuta IDP camp houses over 3,000 displaced persons, mostly women and children. On litigation matters, Bikano State High Court presided over by the Chief Justice um, Jide Aboki has adjourned ruling on a substantive application seeking to prevent the 15th Emir of Kano, Aminu Adu Bayaro, from proceeding with renovations on the historic Nasarawa Mini Palace. The court has seen October 10th, 2024, as the date for the ruling. The plaintiffs, including the Kano State Government, the State Attorney General, and the Kano Emirate Council, seek to preserve the palace's existing structure and cultural heritage, resisting efforts to modernize it. Emir Bayaro was named as the sole defendant in the case. The court had earlier ordered all parties to maintain the structural and architectural integrity of the palace pending the court's final decision. Justice Sylvanus Orji, or Origi, of the Federal Capital Territory High Court has granted former Governor of Taraba State, Darius Ishaku, bail to the tune of 150 million Naira and two shorties in like sum. The two shorties must be resident in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, with their house addresses verified by the Registrar of the Court. The judge said one of them must be a director with the Federal Civil Service. The former governor was arraigned by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, on a 27 billion Naira alleged fraud before Justice Origi. Justice Origi banned the former governor and his co-defendant, Bello Hero, from traveling out of the country except with permission from the court. The High Court of the Federal Capital Territory in Maitama has issued a public summons against immediate past Kogi Governor Yahya Bello to attend court and answer to a fresh 16 counts charge against him. By the summons, Bello is to attend court on October 24th in response to the summons and for his arraignment along with two other defendants. Justice Marian and Nene issued the order for public summons in a ruling on Thursday following an application by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC. Justice Anene, who ordered the EFCC to publish the public summons in a widely circulating newspaper, also ordered the EFCC to paste copies of the public summons on Bello's last known address and in conspicuous places in court premises. The EFCC had claimed that it has been unable to serve Bello with the charge filed on September 24th and in which the ex-governor and two others were charged with criminal breach of trust to the tune of 110.4 billion Naira. The other two defendants in the charge are Umar Oricha and Abdusalam Ihudu. Bello's absence stalled the arraignment earlier scheduled for Thursday. A federal high court in Abuja has issued an order barring the Directorate of the Road Traffic Service, otherwise known as VIO, from further stopping vehicles on the road, impounding or confiscating vehicles and imposing fines on motorists. Justice Evelyn Maha issued the order in a judgment on a fundamental rights enforcement suit filed by a human rights activist and public interest attorney, Abubakar Marshall. Also affected by the order are the Director of Road Transport, the Area Commander, Jabi, and the Team Leader, Jabi, and the Minister of the FCT, who are all listed as respondents. In the judgments delivered on Wednesday, October 2nd, Justice Maha upheld Marshall's argument that no law empowers the respondent to stop, impound, confiscate, seize or impose fines on motorists. 
The judge declared that the first to the fourth respondent, who are under the control of the fifth respondent, the minister of the FCT, are not empowered by any law to statute to stop, impound or confiscate the vehicles of motorists and or impose fines on motorists. She proceeded to issue an order restraining the first to fourth respondents either through their agents, servants or any assigns from impounding, confiscating the vehicle of motorists and or imposing a fine on any motorist as doing so is wrongful, oppressive and unlawful by themselves. The Lagos Environmental Sanitation Corps, Lajeski, popularly known as Sky, on Wednesday secured the conviction of about 12 commercial sex workers to eight months imprisonment of four offenses bordering on prostitution, breach of peace during a dislodgement operation led by the Corps Marshal of the agency. The Corps Marshal, Major Olani Olatsubosu, Cole retired, disclosed this at the headquarters of the agency at Bolade Osho de Lagos. According to him, the themes agenda of the state governor clearly claimed that and stated the need for Lagos to be habitable for business, noting that the situation at Obalende has deteriorated over time, prompting the need to launch a large-scale enforcement operation against offenders. Applauding the judgment, Cole insisted that despite the attacks recorded towards operatives in the line of duty, the agency remains undated by the acts of those he termed nefarious elements, stressing that any arrested defaulter will be made to face the full rot of the law. This is News Hour on Trust TV. Coming up, we'll take a look at how Western influence blamed for endangered Nigerian languages affects cultural identity. This and more after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining us, this is Trust News R. Ah, let's take a look at our top stories again. We brought you death toll from Niger boat mishap hit 36. And PDP member stage protests say no to council election in River State. Now moving on to more stories, a quiet push is gaining momentum in the National Assembly for the creation of regional development commissions across Nigeria's six geopolitical zones. On Thursday, the Senate amended the 2024 North, West and South East Development Commission Act to ensure fair geopolitical representation on their boards. However, doubts remain over whether these commissions will drive real change or merely serve as a conduit for central resource allocation. Trust TV Senate correspondent Saiger Ibrahim brings details of this and more from Thursday's plenary. Take a look. The act, already signed by the president, returned to the Senate for amendment to ensure geopolitical representation on the commission's governing boards. In the course of implementation of the legislation, it was observed that for effective representation and in line with the principles of federal character, okay. it is imperative that membership of the commission be extended to the other geopolitical zones of the country. These are mere omissions that uh, were discovered uh, at a later, I mean, when the bill was passed. So I don't think we need much debate on this. 
we should never under any circumstance or even in the wildest of our dreams surrender this power of confirmation so i'm happy that the eagle eye of the sponsor of this bill detected this very grievous uh what can i say omission the two bills which scaled second reading were referred to the committee of a whole for expeditious actions on the next legislative day the next order of the day was yet another bill for the establishment of a regional development commission this time for the south south geopolitical zone the bill which had created a mild debate among lawmakers who felt its creation would replicate the responsibilities of the niger delta development commission passed second reading after its sponsors and other supporters provided some clarification mr president and distinguished colleagues i will provide some explanations for why the proposed south south development commission is distinct and necessary the NDDC is a multi-regional body that includes states such as Abia and Imo from the Southeast region, and as well as on those states from the Southwest region. However, both of these regions now have their own dedicated development commissions, the Southeast Development Commission, which includes Abia and Imo, and the Southwest Development Commission, which includes on those states. The arguments advanced by the mover of this motion are clearly unimpeachable. He has mentioned the fact that each of the six geopolitical zones in this country seemingly would have their own development commission. We are now creating not resource-based centers of development and entities, but development-based entities according to geopolitical zones. For some of us who are beginning to think why is South-South going to have two different agencies or commissions that will be saddled with giving developments to just one region. Well, I'm happy that um, that explanation has further enlightened and brought in, I mean, broadening the minds of some of us here. Since we have created commissions for other zones, like my zone has uh, gotten one, there's nothing wrong, and I support the idea, that the commission uh, to take care of uh, the South-South in terms of uh, um helping to further develop the zone so i thank you all and uh, i i pray that we conclude this especially expeditiously through the uh special duties committee and by next week we bring this uh to conclusion responding to these development Lecturer of Political Science at the University of Abuja, Dr. Bibi Farouk, describes the seeming preponderance of regional development commissions as a ploy to maintain resource control by the political class. And to many of these members of the National Assembly, pushing these bills and making them uh, laws that would create commissions that would draw straight from the National Federal Federation account is an act of fulfilling the second aspect of their mission. That is creating institutions that could give uh, jobs for people, you know, and draw resources that will come directly to their sections, ethnic groups or religions. So far, several development commissions across different zones are currently at various stages of establishment and implementation. Meanwhile, President Bola Tinubu has written to the National Assembly seeking passage of four tax reform bills. This was contained in a letter by President Tinubu to the Senate President on Thursday. The Nigeria Tax Administration Bill provides a clear and concise legal framework for the fair, consistent, and efficient administration of all the tax laws to facilitate ease of tax compliance, reduce tax disputes, and optimize revenue. The Nigeria Tax Bill 2024 aims to establish clear guidelines for tax collection and administration across the country. Once enacted, the Nigeria Revenue Service Establishment Bill will replace the existing Federal Inland Revenue Service Act. This bill seeks to modernize tax collection and management under the new entity, the Nigeria Revenue Service. Sagir Ibrahim, Trust TV News, Abuja.
The House of Representatives has resolved to urge the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice to review cases where individuals have been held in pre-trial detention for an extended period and take necessary steps to expedite their trials. The House also urged the judiciary to adopt innovative case management strategies that ensure timely hearings with special consideration for individuals who have endured an undue amount of time in pre-trial detention. The report. The resolution followed by adoption of a motion by Representative Ahmed Sani Muhammad. Muhammad observed that a significant number of these individuals are detained for minor offenses requiring minimal or no extensive investigation. He expressed concern that the delay in adjudicating legal matters results in prison congestion, violates the rights of the accused, and erodes public confidence in the judicial system. Observes that numerous individuals are languishing in prolonged pretrial detention, often exceeding legal time, uh, legal limits by years, thereby violating their rights and contributing to prison, over, uh, to prison over, overcrowding. Also observes that a significant number of these individuals are detained for minor offenses requiring minimal or no extensive investigation. Concerned that the delay in adjudicating uh, legal matters results in prison congestion, violates rights of the accused and erodes public confidence in the judicial system. Also, the House of Representatives have directed its Committee on Sports to conduct a thorough investigation into what led to Team Nigerian's poor performance at the 2024 Paris Olympics and to recommend both short and long-term reforms to prevent a repeat of such a disappointing outcome. The House also resolved to examine the proper utilization of funds allocated for the team's preparation and participation in the event. The resolution followed a motion of urgent public impotence raised by Representative Adedayo Adesola. The House is worried that the 24, 2024 Paris Olympics Games came to a close on Sunday, 11th August 2024, with Team Nigeria returning disgracefully without a single medal, a mimicry of the Wovo outing of 12 years ago in the London 2020, 2012 Olympics in spite of the enormous investment and preparations uh, and preparation for the actual event. Also on Thursday, the House approved the reimbursement of 9.54 billion naira to Nasser State and 15.14 billion naira to KB State respectively for the federal takeover of newly constructed cargo facilities. The House do approve a promissory note program as reimbursement to Nasser and KB State government for the takeover of the newly constructed cargo airports, development of Sa Amadou Bello International Airport by the federal government, in the sum of $9,542,651,786 naira, 11 cobalt only. The proposed tax bills present substantial benefits that align with my government's objectives and fiscal reform and economic growth by enhancing taxpayer compliance, strengthening our fiscal institutions, and fostering a more effective and transparent fiscal regime. In this way, I'm confident that these bills, once passed into law, will encourage investment, boost consumer spending, and stimulate the economy. The House has adjourned plenary until next week, Tuesday. Truck drivers play a significant role in Nigeria's interstate business supply chain as companies and businesses rely on their services to transport goods across the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria. In addition to the hazardous nature of their job, the truckers struggle to operate amidst poor road networks and other infrastructural deficits in different parts of the country. Ibrahim Ismail examines the routine that and the challenges of the truck drivers in the Guagoleda area of the FCT and files in this report. This is one of the major convergence points for truck drivers in Guagoleda Local Area Council of the Federal Capital Territory Abuja. 32-year-old Abdulaziz Muhammad warms up his truck ahead of the next trip. This practice is a morning routine to check the status of the vehicle, which also serves as his room. Abdulaziz shared his experience as a truck driver flying Nigerian highways. 
I like the job. Like for I like when I'm driving gently like this to go and offload, come back safe and load again. So what I'm achieving, I thank God for that. I'm achieving something. I'm, I'm achieving and I'm achieving. For example, from Nobajana, Meduguri or Kanu, like this, it's not a small journey. So all your your shoulder, your all these things. Wherever they are, truckers are known for creating an economic hub. As such, their presence here improves revenue generation for small businesses operating around this informal truck parking lot. The truckers buy diesel from us and we are happy. They buy between three to five jerry cans daily, especially those who run out of diesel. We sell more when the truckers are here. We use almost a bag of flour to prepare the waiki, a local delicacy. The truck drivers play a critical role in the Nigerian economy as they transport goods from different parts of the country, especially from north to south and vice versa. But this Herculean task comes with multiple challenges, such as insecurity and others. Last day before yesterday, I'm attacked by, by kidnappers, but God saved me. So the distance between the checkpoint and the kidnappers are no much. They are seeing each other. We run, go meet soldiers the, for the checkpoint. We tell them, see what is happening. For this very place, they are seeing the place. What the soldier man tell me that? Am I the one that will teach him his work? And what I want government to do is let them take responsibility for the illegal people that are still on the roads, like in the night. There are some illegal policemen, army men that are still on the road. They, are, they have to take action on them. These heavy trucks behind me have covered a distance of at least 500 meters on the edge of this highway. Parking heavy trucks by the roadside can be very dangerous because it could lead to accident at some point. But this is the norm in Guagualada Local Council of the FCT. It is a big challenge affecting the operations of the truck drivers. In a week, at times, we do have more than 300 trucks parked in Guagualada, even 500 at times. And most of them, they don't have any alternative where to park. That is why it became mandatory that they have to park and damage that fender of the road and government is not paying attention to it. According to the Truck Drivers Union, building a modern trailer park in Guagualada local council of the FCT will ease their operations, improve government revenue and create job opportunities. Ibrahim Ismail, Trust TV News, Abuja. There is a growing trend among young people where speaking their native languages is quickly going out of style. While many were not taught, some simply abandoned it under peer pressure. Jimmy Atlande reports on the phenomenon in Makodi, the Benue state's capital. Take a look. Nigeria, like many African nations, boasts of over 200 ethnic groups. Sadly, only a few are actively working to preserve their indigenous languages. This has become a major concern for elders who feel the younger generation is neglecting their cultural heritage. For those of us who are members of the traditional council, we are worried with this trend. Oftentimes, we discuss to chart the way forward. But it seems we cannot do it alone. We are begging on whoever is concerned to help. Some residents express concern that parents and guardians are failing to teach their children their native languages, unlike in the past. They worry that many parents prioritize pidgin or English over their mother tongues. School administrators say they are limited in what they can do if parents don't reinforce language learning at home. The parents are so happy to say that my children don't know how to speak tea. They don't know how to speak their mother tongue and they are so proud about it. And so we were speaking to the director of secondary and we told him that it is actually wise that we have 
Um, so we have languages. We know we study language, we study French, but we don't study team language in school. So it is wise that we introduce team and idioma in schools, like like in our schools here in Benin State. We discover that now we find our, ourselves in a situation whereby instead of the parents to speak their own mother tongue with the children at home. Most of them speak English. So the English language should be left for the teachers in school while the parents should speak and teach their children the mother tongue. So parents that are not teaching the, the son that the, the mother language, their the own language and which is not good, which is not proper. I want to advise parents that at least they try to teach you some your language. The government, teachers and parents must unite to address the language challenge if Nigeria's rich cultural diversity is to be preserved for future generations. Jimmy Azandi, Trust TV News, Makodi. In health, nurses at the Ogun State Hospital, Ijaye Abiyokuta on Thursday, protested the alleged assault on a final year student nurse by a consultant orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Adekule Nuruddin. At a peaceful demonstration held within the premises of the hospital, the nurses allege that on September 21st, Dr. Nuruddin, a staff of the hospital, reportedly slapped the student, the student nurse, at the theater, adding despite attempts to seek reparation from the government, no positive outcome was gotten. The protesting nurses, led by the state chairman of the National Association of the Nigerian Nurses and Midwives, Adejo Kebelo, said the demonstration is to register their displeasure over the unethical practice of the consultant orthopedic surgeon. Addressing the protesters, the medical director of the hospital, Dr. Olubumi Osu Naike, said the government is aware of the situation and is already taking steps to address the incident. Given the authority 48 hours to address the issue of branch, it is injustice to nurses. And we will never condone that. It is our Sanaya student today. Tomorrow it might be me. And that is why we are fighting against it. We want justice. And the PSR fraud against bullying at work. Yes. This is physical assault. Yes. Which is punishable under the law. This is dated 38, Monday, Tuesday on the public holiday. Yesterday I got this. And the commissioner is aware, the two parents and the police are aware. So that is to tell you that the management is already looking into it officially. I was decided based on this letter, it's just the and the board is aware. That is the much I can say, but I want to appreciate you for doing this. It is not management's duty to sweep things under the carpet. Let's now join Yusuf Akogu for business news updates. <music> Time for some business stories. Oil marketers have said that the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited portal used to purchase petrol has been short against dealers, making it impossible for them to apply for the commodity purchase. They say marketers are still awaiting over 90 million liters of petrol from the state owned company, valued at about 79 billion naira. Marketers had complained over their inability to order petrol, with the NNPC confirmed the shutdown of its purchasing portal last month. According to NNPC spokesperson Olufemi Shunaye, the company shut the portal due to a significant backlog. Shunaye explained that the shutdown became necessary to stop NNPC from holding marketers' capital for too long. The federal government has introduced new fiscal incentives to boost foreign investment in Nigeria's oil and gas sector. The two incentives were unveiled by the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edu, in a statement on Wednesday. According to the statement by the finance minister and signed by the director of information and public relations, Mohamed Manga, the incentives are aimed at revitalizing Nigeria oil and gas sector. It also announced that the importation of key energy products and infrastructure, including diesel and feed gas, liquefied petroleum gas, compressed natural gas, electricity vehicle, liquefied natural gas, infrastructure, and clean cooking equipment, will no longer require value added tax. 
Manga said that the initiative will position Nigeria deep offshore basin as a premier destination for global oil and gas investment, boost our energy security, and accelerate Nigerian transition to cleaner energy sources. Nigeria's stock market closed Thursday trading in red as profit taking hit major high capped equities. Leading the losers today is Dangote Cement, the biggest loser there. It lost 10% to close at 478 naira and 80 copper per share. Mark Nichols also down 10% as well to close at 1 naira and 35 copper per share. Of course, NSL Tech also in the negative territory, 7.58% to close at 61 copper per share. Of course, this has dragged down the market downward by over 1%, 1.19% the loss. Of course, volume of traded 263.3. 9 million shares were traded value at 6.76 billion naira. It is of 8,565 lead exchanges among investors, of course, with the all share index still way below 100,000 basis points. Looking at the top trading equities by volume, UBA leader table 37.09 million shares traded. Zenith Bank 19.01 million shares, of course. Deep Cap also, uh, also there 13.99 million shares. It also traded at the close of business this Thursday. Looking at the gainers today, uh, despite the negative closure of the market some equities recorded gain set plus nigeria plc a uh, remarkable gain there today a 10 percent gain to close at 4513 naira and 40 copper per share livestock feed also uh, up as well 9.93 percent to close at 2 naira and 99 copper per share of course regalins also gain 9.76 percent to close at 90 copper per share uh, there of course that's the highlight of stock trading as it went down this thursday on the floor of ngs let's see the global stock market and exchange rate data for today <music> Prices rise on Thursday on investors' concern that a widening Middle East conflict could disrupt crude oil supply from the region, though a stronger global supply outlook keep a lead on gains. At the London market, Brent could sell for $75 per barrel. For the pair basket dealers, offer $71 per barrel. And that's business. I am Yusuf Akogo. <music>on the international scene the Djibouti coast guard has been retrieving bodies of the migrant who drowned off the coast of the horn of africa the u.n migration agency said on tuesday that two vessels carrying migrants sank in the red sea off the coast of Djibouti, killing 45 people with dozens still missing the international organization for migration iom in Djibouti, is supporting state emergency services in search and rescue operations for missing persons they said that so far 55 people have been rescued and are receiving medical and psychosocial support the migrants said they were forced off their vessel in open sea by smugglers also iom said the boats had departed from yemen carrying 310 people Thousands of migrants from African, Middle Eastern and South Asian countries seeking a better life in Europe attempt irregular migration every year. Rescuers have recovered some 20 bodies after a boat carrying people and merchandise capsized this Thursday on Lake Kivu in eastern DR Congo, according to security and harbor sources. While authorities did not specify the number of passengers on board, two children were rushed to hospital but died before they could be treated, a medical source said. More, than, more and more people are opting to cross the northern tip of Lake Kivu by boat to reach Goma to avoid overland travel in an area prone to fighting between Congolese government forces and the rebel movement M23. Since launching an offensive in late 2021, 
M23, a Rwanda-backed largely Tutsi militia, has seized large swathes of territory in the eastern DRC, a mineral-rich region housing a string of rival, rival rebel groups that has been plagued by internal and cross-border violence for the past three decades. Deadly shipwrecks on lakes and rivers are common occurrences in the country and the central area country where roads are in poor condition and a systematic lack of passengers lists often complicates rescue operations. In sports, an Argentinian court on Tuesday issued a ruling allowing the transfer of the football legend Diego Maradona's remains to a public mausoleum in Buenos Aires, granting a request made by his five children. The court in San Isidro said it gave the right of removal to Maradona's children for humanitarian and emotional reason, adding that his family should decide when to make the move. The 1986 World Cup winner was buried in a private cemetery around 50 kilometers north of Buenos Aires. A public uh, mausoleum in Buenos Aires for Maradona's remain is currently being built in the afflu affluent um, neighborhood of Puerto Madero. Several people, including health professionals, are to face trial to for their alleged responsibility in Maradona's death in 2020. Prosecutors launched a probe into those involved in his care and alleged his treatment was full of deficiencies and irregularities. I do not have a fully formed opinion on this matter, but what I care about the most is that the family is happy with this decision. If his daughters pushed for this to happen, I'm happy with it. Whatever the family decides in order for Mr. Diego Armando Maradona to rest in peace, I'm happy with. Let's now join Adenia Jishafe for more sports news. The Nigerian Football Federation has announced the launch of the NFF Monthly Award, a celebration of the outstanding performances of Nigerian football players across various football leagues, including Nigerian Premier Football League MPFL. With the football calendar in full swing, the NFL Monthly Awards aim to honor the brilliance, dedication, and passion that Nigerian football players bring to the game, recognizing the top players who have left their mark on the pitch in the categories of Player of the Month, Male and Female, Goal of the Month, and the Discovery of the Month. According to the NFF, the nomination process of, for the awards is scientific, ensuring a fair and accurate selection of nominees. An independent organization will collate and analyze player statistics throughout the month, ensuring that the best performances are highlighted. Fans and journalists will have the chance to vote for their favorite players via the official NFL voting portal, while voting period will run for one week following the announcement of the nominations. Fans' votes will account for 40% of the final decision, enabling supporters to have their voices heard and directly influence the outcome of this prestigious award. The remaining 60% will be determined by journalists and industry professionals, ensuring the balanced and well rounded selection process. And still on football, the interim coach of the Nigerian Super Eagles, Oxen Guavon, has assured Nigerians that Super Eagles will approach the doubleheader game against Libya like a World Cup final. The three time African champions will confront the North Africans on day three and four of the 2025 Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers. Iguavon admitted that the game will be very tough as it will be Libya back to back with the same approach for the previous games. According to the Gaffer, no game is easy. Eagles will do everything possible to put smiles on the face of Nigerians. She promised. And lastly on football, the Commission of African Football, CAF, is set to follow in the footstep of UEFA in organizing the Under-19 Champions League. An update from Cairo, the headquarters of the body, says the competition department is already nursing the ambition of having the youth competition as soon as possible. CAF already has competition for age-grade national teams, with no competition for the age-grade at the club level. However, they are yet to ratify how the competition will be organized and how clubs will be admitted into the tournament. That's Sport News. I'm Adeni Ajishafe. And with that, we wrap up News Hour on Trust TV. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms and join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentaries. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thanks for watching. Good evening.